is actually from a recent science paper. Um, and we're looking actually at, we think there is frost inside Shackleton Crater. And we can tell that because of the surface reflectance um, compared to how it appears outside of the crater. And Shackleton is a permanently shadowed crater. And also the slope um, indicates that uh, they, they think that the frost is building on some of those high slope areas. But they don't think that the reflectance is a result of recent activity exclusively. They do think that there may have been um, frost inside the crater. So Lola is helping us learn that as well. So I just wanted to show another, another image from Lola. So we also have our temperature, yep, and this was supposed to be the South Pole temperature right after that other one. Um, but here is, is the South Pole of the Moon has the coldest temperature ever measured in the entire solar system, which is pretty cool. It's kind of chilly. Um, I, I had, um, I think it's, it's about, what is it, about 28 Kelvin, I think is what they came down to, which is pretty cold considering that all atomic motion stops at zero. This is the place for earmuffs if you go bring them. Um, very warm ones, um, but yes, this is the coldest measured place, colder than Pluto. And the reason for that is again those permanent shadows. It doesn't get sunlight in there, so it's colder even though it's closer to the sun because it doesn't get illuminated. Um, what we know about Pluto anyway, of course, we're going to find out more with our, our New Horizons mission going out, but um, it, there are no areas that have quite as large of areas with as little sunlight in them as on in the solar system anyway. So, kind of cool. Um, something else we found, more radiation coming off the surface than we expected. There's actually twice as much coming off the surface. We expected this much. Um, we expected that as you go towards the moon, that big object blocks the radiation from space around it, but it doesn't block all of it. It actually reflects some of it, and that was something we did not expect to find. Um, and we're also measuring what, what is going on over time with the sun. So as we talked about, you know, the sun was pretty inactive in the beginning. So you can tell the beginning the crater team was kind of like, okay, we're getting ready. We're getting this sort of baseline. And then all of a sudden, you know, it started getting more excited. And so we, we got some better data. Right? Actually, that was even in 2010. So in the beginning, they were kind of bummed out. But, but then they got some more. And we're getting even more solar storms now. Um, we also like to play with other spacecrafts. So there are several spacecrafts at the moon right now. Um, of course, El Cross was some of our original imaging. The Grail spacecrafts, the one that measured the gravity of the moon, um, or the gravity map of the moon, <coughs> named Ebb and Flow, uh, just recently impacted, and we were able to, to and wow, you can't see that at all, but <laughs> here's the lunar surface, and here is the slit that LAMP uses to collect data. They have a little window that they open up and they are able to collect data from that. And then we're able to um, make models of, of the different volatile distributions that, that come out from, from these impacts. And we're also able to see them um, with our LRAP camera. So those are just a very few, I know it seemed like a lot, and I could have kept you here all day and I, I won't do that, but those are some of the things that we're finding out with LRO. I wanted to mention Laddie briefly because it is very cool um, and it launched last night at 11.37 p.m. from Mars. Did you know that? No. Yes. Wallops Flight Facility is now the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. <laughs> so, it was a moon launch from Mars. And I had to tell you about this because that doesn't happen all that often. It's actually the first um, <coughs> first mission to the moon that went from there. And it's called the Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer. And a lot of people hear that and think, well, the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. But it does. It does. It has what's called a surface boundary exosphere, um, which means that none of the particles in the atmosphere actually touch. They're all just sort of floating around and don't. They're not aware of any other particles. They just, it's a collisionless atmosphere, which is kind of neat. And actually, um, so we want to find out about it. Um, so it's very thin. The, the 
thing we can see most in it from Earth is the sodium. Sodium has a very high reflectance, we're able to see it, but we expect other species to be in the atmosphere that we are going to be paying attention to. Um, and the dust part, oh, and, and again, so I should have said this before, the surface boundary exosphere, we're really interested in it because we think it may be the most common atmosphere in the, er, it's not maybe, it is the most common atmosphere in the solar system because several small planets and moons and asteroids have this type of atmosphere. And so we have one right in our own backyard, so we want to learn about it before we start building.